Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, taking your time to uh, listen to the articles that we will be presenting at town meeting this year, and hopefully this will answer uh, some of the questions you may have. Um, we do have our traditional uh, articles that we have every year, and you'll hear Tom Hayes with some of them um, at the end of this presentation. And, and then we have a few that are unique uh, to this particular year, so uh, we want to go through them as well. So um, I want to start with Article uh, 7-11 and 7-29, and that's our yearly uh, equipment purchase that we make at the DPW. So uh, in, uh, the reason these two articles, uh, 11 and 29, is because of the way they, they get uh, funded. One of them will be through uh, the sewer enterprise. But basically, we're talking about a total purchase of $512,500. Uh, and this year, we are replacing one of the large trucks at the highway division. That will be H-17. That is a 2001 heavy-duty dump truck. And we uh, are intending to get a, a heavy-duty dump truck with a sander and a plow. Then we have four pickup trucks. And our goal that we have, as we've been doing the last few years, is to create more of a fleet of town vehicles that we can use to uh, plow in the wintertime, as well as our vehicles that we use during the year. And those vehicles will be for the cemetery, water, and sewer. And they are replacing um, several vehicles, uh, two small uh, Ford Ranges that we had. Both of them were over 100,000 miles on it. Uh, we also replaced in uh, uh, Ford Escape which is uh, it's getting pretty rotted right now, particularly the frame. And we're also replacing a, a very old Crown Victoria that we use in facilities and cemeteries. So those are four pickup trucks. It's pretty much a standard plan that you see every year. Um, and the last piece of equipment that we have is a replacement for a mini excavator. Uh, we had a backhoe at the highway division. We disposed of it a couple of years ago. Uh, it was a 1993 Ford backhoe, which I don't believe Ford even makes backhoes anymore. And our goal this year is to replace it with a mini excavator. Uh, the use of the mini excavator will be for cash base and repairs, but mostly the reason for the mini excavator is to help us with the sidewalk program that we've been doing with the highway division. As you recall, a couple of years ago, the town meeting authorized the purchase of a sidewalk paper, and we've been doing projects every year since. Uh, our goal this year is to get the mini excavators so we can clear the existing sidewalks in an in a easier way without damaging too much uh, people's uh, front lawns. Uh, it's really, really well suited for that particular uh, task. Uh, over the last few years, we've been renting uh, those excavators, and, and I, this time we're proposing to uh, buy this one as a replacement to the Ford backhoe that we already had. Um, we tried to keep these purchases to about $500,000 every year, and, and that is the goal that we have. Hopefully in the next two years, you're gonna see this number decline as we have been upgrading most of the heavy duty trucks. Those trucks are close to $200,000 plus, uh, and so they, they account for almost half of the whole allocation. We have one more that we'll be purchasing uh, next year. But for the most part, uh, we're running a pretty good fleet right now. And uh, again, thank you for the town meeting members for supporting uh, that on our end. So that's for vehicle equipment. Uh, a new item that we have this year uh, is facilities upgrades, including energy conservation measures. Uh, if you recall a few years ago, uh, about five, we had a similar article in town meeting and that allowed us to do improvements to our buildings when it came to energy conservation items. Uh, we did a lot of work at the town hall, at the annex, we did work at the uh, fire station. We'd replace a lot of the controls. And that allowed us to save quite a bit of money uh, over the years. Um, oh, since 2015, we've saved over $125,000 in electricity and gas bills. Uh, so our goal with this year is to actually leverage these funds. We're asking for $250,000. So we'll take this $250,000 and we'll add it to a grant that the town obtained by joining green communities, that is $173,000. And with that amount, we'll be able to replace the two drop top units of the library. Those are the units that provide uh, all the air handling for the library, as well as air conditioning for the library. 
Uh, as you can imagine, uh, the library is, is getting pretty old right now. I think it's a 1995 construction. And the idea will be to replace those units this year. And then we'll follow with the replacement of the roof, which was already approved by town meeting last year. Uh, and then we'll complete that project with doing uh, controls for all of the rooms. There is over 42 uh, separate pneumatic control units that we have at every one of the rooms of the library. And we'd like to move those up to electronic control so we can take advantage of uh, the savings by shutting down systems when they're not needed, et cetera. Uh, again, we hope you support that. Uh, we are pursuing at the same time any type of uh, credits and uh, refunds and, and rebates that we give from uh, uh, Eversource. So we will leverage what we have and whatever money is left over in the account, if any, say that if we, we were to be successful in getting some of these rebates, then we'll utilize those monies for additional uh, projects, all energy related. This is why it was um, named energy conservation measures, similar to the one we did a few years ago, so to allow us to get those rebates and reinvest it in our facilities and again, provide us with more energy savings going forward. Um, I hope you support this article because it'll allow us to do those units as well as doing the roof uh, the following year and pretty much completing a lot of the work that we've been doing at the library in, in recent history. Uh, one uh, item which is needed and different is Article 7-15, that is the town hall generator. Uh, that is the generator that sits, uh, is located as you come in the town hall through the side door. Uh, it's over 20 years old. It's been giving us a lot of problems recently. Uh, and by recently, I mean the last couple of years. Uh, the goal is to uh, replace it with a brand new generator. That generator provides electricity, not just to the town hall, but also to the town annex and our emergency operations center that is run out of the town annex. So it's, it's important to have the generator, uh, particularly for uh, running uh, in case of emergencies because the computer systems and everything else that we have for the entire town, including the phones, are run out of the town hall uh, to the IT office. So it's, it's imperative that we have uh, a reliable uh, source for power. Unfortunately, like I said, we, we have some problems over the last couple of years and it's time that we upgrade that uh, generator. Now, I intentionally left uh, the uh, Article 13 for last uh, because this is, uh, this is one of the largest projects that the town has been working on and it is the um, joining the MWRA and capital construction that we have to do as part of that project. So this article that we have for you tonight, or we will have for you at town meeting rather, is uh, for $3.5 million. Now this is money that we have already uh, gone over with the town meeting when, when you approve phase one of the project. So this $3.5 million is part of the $16.9 million project that we described to you a few years ago. So what we'd like to do is to proceed with the design of uh, phase two of the project. We'd like to accelerate it. If you recall, we had said to you that we were gonna come back in May of 2021 and ask you for the $16.9 million. What we're asking you tonight is to uh, give us part of that at this town meeting. It'll allow us to do two things. One, what I just said, which is to uh, start the design for phase two. But the second part of it is to actually do some construction that is needed as part of phase one. As we've gone through the permitting process for the last two years, then what is called the MEPA process, uh, there's been changes that were needed for the project and, and some actually in, in, in a very good way. Uh, and the main change that has happened is that the Adams Street water main that we're going to install now, which originally was going to be used for backup, uh, is now going to be part of our main transmission line. Now as such, uh, DEP is requiring us to install a chemical feed station at the town line. And the reason they want us to have that is so we can add anti-corrosion agents to the water coming from the MWRA. Now, the water of the MWRA is already not corrosive, but they use a different system to prevent corrosion in the pipes. 
In Burlington, we use orthophosphates. That's what we'll use at the two water treatment plants. What DEP is requiring us to do is to have the same type of corrosion control entering the town. So this station is gonna allow us to match the chemistry of the water coming in. And it also will allow in the future, if need be, if we needed to add more disinfectant to the water coming in, uh, in the town, that facility will be uh, designed and constructed to allow for that in the future as well. So it has those two purposes. Um, again, as we are moving into phase one uh, construction, we like to build a facility now. It's, it's also part of the original um, estimated number that we had presented at the town meeting. We just are asking you to bring it in a little bit ahead of time. That will allow us to, again, build the pipe this year, uh, do the construction of the chemical uh, feed station, start design of phase two, which will accelerate construction of that to hopefully the years 2021 and 2022. Um, this is all fits within the 10 year plan that we presented at a town meeting. There's no changes to the rate structure that we proposed. It all fits all within. Uh, it just allows us to move it a little faster. Now our plan is if, if you approve uh, the $3.5 million this year, will be to come back in May of 21 and then ask for construction money for phase two. Uh, and hopefully, again, do the construction in 21 and 22 and have a full MWA construction line finished by the end of hopefully 2022. So uh, again, the good news is the permitting uh, is coming to an end. Uh, we, we have very positive news recently. The MEPA process was completed. The Water Resources Commission process has started, uh, which is great because that will allow us to hopefully have a final vote by the end of the summer this year. And we're gonna start construction of the Adam Street Pipe uh, to have it completed as we get the permits from the Water Resources Commission. So there's a lot of positive news happening right now. Uh, and again, we'd like to continue with phase two, which is what we are asking uh, for you as part of this article. Again, thank you very much. Uh, for your attention and uh, please do call me or Mr. Hayes directly if you have any questions about any of these articles or any of the other articles that we are proposing for this town meeting as well. Thank you. Hello, this is Tom Hayes, town engineer, and I'm here to uh, talk about a few articles that we're bringing to town meeting this season. Uh, first off is the uh, road and parking lot um, paving article. So this article is, uh, we've been bringing this to town meeting every other year since 2006. And what this uh, article will do is supplement um, a chapter 90 uh, funds that we receive from the state. What we do with this money is uh, it's a $3 million article and the $3 million will fund both parking lots and pavement. We take about $2 million, which we apply to the 105 miles of roads that uh, DPW maintains, and uh, about $1 million is, uh, goes towards the 47 parking lots, which uh, again, DPW maintain, maintains those parking lots. So local funding has been crucial in maintaining the roads in a, an acceptable condition, so we hope you support this article. Uh, next article was for the uh, Francis Wyman Pump Station Enforcement and Design. So this is a $300,000 request for the design of the Francis Wyman Pump Station. So this pump station was constructed in 1968. So it's 52 years old, which is uh, just beyond its design life. We um, have had the all the stations, um, and we have 14 of them in the system. We had them all evaluated in 2012. And we, we came up with uh, essentially a punch list of, of deficiencies. Uh, so Francis Wyman was prioritized uh, number one for replacement. We've done some repairs over time, but it is time now to do a major overhaul. So um, what we are gonna do is a complete renovation of the pump station uh, and force main. The force main currently runs through the wetlands and we've had two failures in which um, you know, sewage overflowed into the adjacent brooks. So we're gonna relocate that force main into the roadway so it's accessible in the future and then a complete renovation of the pump station. Uh, the next article uh, is pump station maintenance. So pump station maintenance, uh, we've come to town meeting, I wanna say for the last four or five years, and we typically request about $50,000. So this, this, this request is, is a little bit higher. Uh, well, it's much higher, $120,000. 
and um, but we'll use this money for um, maintenance, main, keep maintain a maintenance program of our 14 pump stations. So we'll be replacing things like pumps, upgrading equipment, uh, regular everyday maintenance. Um, and you might ask yourself why, why, why is this so much more? Well, um, with the pandemic and the popularity of, of wet wipes, we've experienced a lot of problems with um, people flushing down the toilet and they go right into the pump station and they tend to, to jam up the pumps. So we are implementing a um, more intense wet well cleaning program so we can try to um, um, capture those wet wipes before they get into the pump station. So um, it causes damage to the pumps. It, it's a hazard for our guys to go in those stations and have to clear those pumps. And um, it also is a potential um, source for um, a backup, backup in people's basements when the pumps go down. Um, back up into the environment when the when the system overflows. So um, we hope you will be supportive of this article as well. Thank you.